Welcome to the Pharmacy Masterclass. I thought it would be a good idea today to start off talking to you about different types of insulin calculation questions that we can encounter. Now, with regards to insulin calculations, it's important to understand what are the two methods by which patients can utilize insulin. What I mean by that is there are two routes by which they can actually decide how to manage their total insulin requirements from a pen or a cartridge. The first route on the left, which I'm going to talk about, is where if a patient has an insulin pen and they're told to use the pen fully and then only discard it when this pen is empty. So they must discard the pen when it is empty. What that's referring to is, for example, hypothetically, if a patient had an insulin pen and in that pen there were 300 units of insulin in total and our patient was using 70 units of insulin daily, they would be able to achieve four full days of dosing out of that insulin pen because 4 times 70 is 280 units. So they would get four full days of insulin out of that pen. However, remaining in that pen would be 20 units because 300 units were in the pen in total and our patient used up 280 units for four full days. So 300 take away 280 leaves them with 20 units but our patient needs a dose of 70 units so what the patient would do in a situation like this where they're told to discard the pen when it's empty is they would inject themselves once from that pen with the remaining 20 and then they would open a new pen and they would use 50 units at the new pen and inject themselves with that to get a total dose of 70 units that they need so this is the first method that can be used. And this is generally what we would class as the default method. So what that means is if in an exam question, they don't specifically state to you which method to use, you must always default to this method, which is the patient's going to use multiple injections. Let me write this down for you. The patient's going to use multiple injections at the end of the pen or cartridge at the end of the bend or cartridge to get their full dose okay so hopefully that makes sense that's pathway one now let's talk about pathway two so pathway two is where the patient may be told only to use for example a single injection to provide each dose or another way they could word that is they might say the patient must not split doses across pens they both mean the same thing they're both achieving the same thing what what that patient is actually being told here is that if they have the same scenario so we've got our insulin pen and let's say there's 300 units in that insulin pen and our patient requires 70 units per day then our patient can get four days supply out of this insulin pen because four times 70 is 280 units so they've used up I've color it blue 280 units there they're left with a yellow here of 20 units in there so there's 20 units left at the end of that pen what this second pathway is telling you is that the patient must discard this 20 units they must not use it because they can't achieve a full dose so they're going to open a brand new pen and out of this brand new pen they're going to get a full dose of 70 units so why are there two pathways? 
when dealing with insulin here? Well, generally, sometimes it can be because some patients we might not want them to have the difficulty or complication of trying to inject themselves twice. Sometimes patients can have a phobia of needles or injections. So limiting them to one injection when they need an insulin dose is better patient management. In terms of your calculation for the GPHC exam, it's very important that when you first read through your calculations question, and if it's an insulin based scenario, try and highlight which pathway the question is hinting at for you to use. So are they hinting at pathway one, where the patient is to use the pen when it's until it's completely empty, or are they hinting at pathway two, where the patient must only get a single full dose out of each injection and discard any remainder that's left and not use it. So what relevance does this play? So that's what we're going to show now in the examples you and me. We're going to go through some example calculations and we're going to look at different ways in which we can tackle those calculations. But remember, the first step is to highlight this pathway. Which one is it going to fall under? And remember, if it doesn't stay in the question, you will always default to pathway one. Now, another point I'm going to briefly discuss before we start the examples is that when we're dealing with pathway two, so when we're dealing with this scenario of patients having a single dose to achieve each, a single dose, so one dose equals one injection in this method here. There is another factor that we must now take into account. So if we highlight the questions telling us to go down pathway two, we must isolate, is the dosing a single daily dose that the patient's injecting or is it a twice daily dosing structure a twice or three times a day it could be three times a day so a BD or a TDS dosing structure so this also plays a relevance in the calculation for pathway 2 for pathway 1 this is not relevant it we would do the same type of calculation so in pathway 1 where our patient is going to use the pen until it's fully empty, it's a very nice, straightforward, easy calculation. And what that calculation involves is calculating the total number of units that the patient's going to need for their course, and we simply divide it by the number of units in one pen or cartridge, and that tells us how many pens or cartridges our patient requires. So when we do the calculation examples, it's a really straightforward method. Even if they're using insulin once a day, twice a day, three times a day, pathway one is really straightforward. And we've got lots of calculations like that to practice in the course. Now, pathway two is where we have to do an extra step because in pathway two, because they're using one dose to deliver one injection, what we have to understand here is let's say for example in pathway two we're told that they can only use one dose to deliver one injection to deliver one dose and let's go back to this scenario of we've got a 300 unit insulin pen and let's say hypothetically our patient is using a dose of 40 units of insulin in the morning and 30 units of insulin at night then what we have to understand is that yes, the total amount of insulin units they're using per day is 70 units. So we could say 300 divided by 70. So let me just get my calculator. 300 divided by 70 gives me 4.2857142 days. That's how many days the patient could get out of this 300 unit insulin pen. But remember, they can only use one injection to provide one dose. So let's have a look at this part here. They can get four full days of insulin dosing out of this pen. So if we do four full days times our 70 units per day, that means our patient can get 280 units they're gonna use up in that four full days. So if we do 300 units in our one pen, 
and we subtract this 280 units that they've used up we're left with 20 units in that pen aren't we remember we colored it yellow when I showed you this previously so we've got 20 units left in that pen what we have to then ask ourselves is the remaining yellow amount of insulin in that pen that 20 units is it enough to provide any one of these doses here is it enough to provide one single dose and if it is then we have to take that into account in the calculation if it's not then we can simply ignore that 20 and we continue as normal and we would say right one pen is going to give us four full days of insulin that the patient needs four full days of treatment so then if the question says right okay how many days will five pens supply we can nice and easily say five times four equals 20 days so 20 days of insulin can supply so we will encounter questions now when we start practicing where we're going to have to look at this remaining amount of insulin that's left in the pen and then if the question is going down pathway two we're going to have to look can we it deliver one of those doses and how our calculation method is going to differ the answer to this question is two flex pens so let's take a look at tackling this question so the question's asking us question mark what is the minimum number of pens that a patient is going to need for 28 days of treatment so straight away what I've done is I've isolated what the question actually wants from me and by doing that it helps me to build a game plan to the answer so I've taken a look at the last part of the statement after reading through it and understood using the units that the question wants the answer in what the statement actually is by doing that it allows me to see a pathway what do I mean in terms of pathway what I mean is sometimes in an exam question you might look at it and you might think oh my days it's a really big wordy scenario how do I know which information to use well in the only way to tackle that is to understand what the question wants from you sometimes writing out as a statement will help which is how I teach because I find this very very useful and then you know which information to pull out to apply this methodology to so for example because the question is asking for the number of days of treatment I'm gonna think okay which pathway am I going down here for my patient is it pathway one or pathway two is my patient going to need multiple injections are they going to use the pen up fully or are they to discard the pen if it can't provide a full dose so in this scenario in the question they haven't told us it doesn't state which method they want the patient to use so that means we're going to go down pathway one and we're going to say okay however many units the patient can get out of the pen they must use it all fully and for that method it's nice and easy we calculate the total number of units that the patient's going to need for the course so total units for the course and we simply divide that answer by the total number of units that there are in one pen or one cartridge and that will tell us question mark how many pens we need so let's calculate how many units our patient's going to require so they're using 10 units at dinner and 6 units at breakfast so 10 plus 6 is 16 units per day 16 units per day times by 28 days so 16 times 28 on my calculator gives me 448 units per day now that I've calculated that I'm going to work out how many units there are in one pen so in the question it tells me here 100 units per mil is a strength and it's a 3 mil pen so if there's a hundred units in one milliliter question mark how many units are in three milliliters well to go from one to three on the right is times by three so on the left we're going to times our hundred units by three that gives us an answer of 300 units so there's 300 units in one pen now we can take the total number of units that our patient needs so they need 448 units for the course divide that by 300 units gives us an answer of the patient needs 
333 pence. Now, we, in a quantity to supply situation, we have to look at this logically. The question is asking for how many insulin pens is a patient going to require. We can't give 0.49 of an insulin pen over here. So we always round up. So we give two full pens. If we rounded down to one, that would be wrong because the patient would not have enough insulin for 28 days. The fact that we round up to give two full pens is the safer option. So it's not about your normal rules of rounding. When you're dealing with quantity to supply scenarios, please remember, especially with insulin quantity to supply questions, when we get our answer, and it's a decimal place answer, we have to look at it logically and think, right, how much will the patient need to ensure they've got enough for the course that's needed? So in this case, 1.49 pens would be two pens that our patient would require. The answer to this question is 45 days. So let's take a look at the question. After reading through the question once, I'm going to now understand what the question wants me to calculate. So I'm going to put question mark, I'm going to put the units that it wants the answer in and the equal sign. And now from the question, I'm going to extract out what it wants. So I'm going to select the highlighter and the question saying how many full days will the prescription last? And when it's saying will the prescription last, what is the actual prescription? Well, the prescription is three of these three mil cartridges. So the question is asking you how many days will three times three mil cartridges last? That's what the question is asking us. How many full days will three of these three mil cartridges last? Now, I talked about earlier on about understanding which pathway this insulin question needs to go down. So is it going to go down pathway one or pathway two? Pathway two is where the patient must use um, one injection to deliver one dose. And if there's any insulin left in that pen and it can't deliver a full dose, we get rid of the pen. Pathway one is where, just to remind you, that the patient continues using the insulin in the pen. Even if it can't provide a full dose, they have to inject themselves with what's remaining. And then once the, that, obviously that pen's empty, they will open a new pen and inject themselves a second time to deliver the remaining amount they need to get that full dose. Prefer Personally, I'd rather be down pathway two. I'd rather inject myself once than twice if I had to, uh, but each to their own. So this question is a pathway two question. The question is, is actually telling us, if I get the highlighter pen again, and this time pick a different color, it's saying assume a single injection from the pen will provide each dose. So the question is actually telling us that you must go down pathway two. One injection is gonna give one full dose. So in a question like this, how does our methodology differ? Well, the methodology differs because we don't calculate the total number of units they need for the course. What we do is we look at one pen or one cartridge on its own singular. So in the question, it tells us that we've got a three milliliter size cartridge with this insulin in there. It tells us that the strength of this insulin is 200 units in one milliliter. So if we've got a three milliliter cartridge, question mark, how many units are there going to be in there? Well, in order to work that out, we say on the right that a factor of three is used. We times one mil by three to go to three mil. So on the left, we're going to times our units by three, because whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So three times 200 is 600. So there's 600 units in one three mil cartridge. That's what we've now worked out, that there's 600 units of insulin inside here. Now let's take a look at what dose our patient's actually taking. So the question it tells us the patient's using 38 units in the evening. So again, this is a nice easy question because it's a once daily dosing, one daily dosing. So therefore, all we have to do is say, if our patient's got 600 units in one cartridge and we divide that by 38 units a day, so how many units there are in the cartridge divided by 38 units for one day will tell us how many days this is gonna last. So I'm typing in 600 on my calculator, pressing divide by 38, 
and it gives me an answer of 15.789473 days. So now I have to think to myself logically, well, how many days is that? How many full days of insulin can my patient get? And it's 15 days. So my patient can get 15 full days of insulin. I must not take the decimal place into account here. Why? Because that's not going to provide a full day of insulin. It's the 15 that's going to provide a, a full day in this scenario because the patient's using a single injection, remember, to provide each dose. So if one cartridge equals 15 full days, the question, remember, when we wrote it out at the very beginning to understand what the question wanted from us, said how many days are equal to three of these cartridges. So now I can say, okay, question mark, how many cartridges are equal, sorry, apologies, not how many cartridges, three cartridges are equal to question mark, how many full days? Notice I'm writing it underneath the top red part. I'm writing it in the right places so I can visually see what's taking place. So to go from one cartridge to three cartridge is a factor of times three on the left. So all I have to do on the right is times my 15 days by three because one cartridge equals 15 full days. Three cartridges will equal three times 15. So three times 15 on my calculator gives me 45, which is the answer. 45 full days. One of the things I'd just like to show you so you can visually picture this is we calculated over here that there's 600 units in one of these cartridges. We worked out that one cartridge lasts 15 full days. I just want to show you that if 15 full days times by 38 units per day, so 15 days times 38 units, how many units is that? How many units will they use up in 15 days? Well, they'll use up 570 units. So in this insulin cartridge, let's say there, there are 600 units. If they are gonna use up 570 units in that 15 days, then 600 minus 570 is 30 units. So there's 30 units of insulin left in this pen or cartridge after they've used up the 15 full days. 30 units. And 30 units that's left can't provide the full dose of 38 units. So the patient discards it in this scenario. That's why we only look at the full days when we're dealing with scenarios in pathway two. Now, obviously, if there's a twice daily dosing structure, so if the patient was using 38 units and 20 units, then it's going to be different. The answer to this question is 27 days. So let's take a look at tackling the question. So again, first of all, I'm going to after reading through the question once, I'm now going to formulate what the question wants from me. So the question saying question mark in days, how many full days will five pens last? So question mark days equal five pens. That's what the question's asking from me. Now with this being an insulin question, I'm now thinking to myself, okay, which pathway is this going to go down? Pathway one or pathway two? Which type of question is this? And from the question, I can see it's telling me that you cannot split doses across pens. So when it says you cannot split doses across pens, that's pathway two. That, that is telling you that one injection must equal one full dose. So if there's anything remaining in that insulin pen that can't provide a full dose, not a full dose, we're gonna dispose of it. That's what that's telling you. So now let's dive into the calculation and let's take a look at our methodology for this calculation. The other thing to note when you're doing a calculation like this is pay attention to the wording. So in this question, I can see I've been given the strength of the insulin pen. I've been given the dosing structure at twice a day, 21 units in the morning and 32 units at night. 
and I'm aware about the splitting of the doses and I've been given how many mils there are in the pen. Now, when we go down pathway two, so I'm just gonna write two here. When we go down pathway two, it's very important to do this extra step now, which is what is the dosing structure? Is the dosing structure one daily or is it twice a day or more? Because depending on which one it falls in out of these two, the calculation will differ slightly. So we did one where it was one daily in the previous question. This one is a twice a day dosing structure. So the, the calculation is going to differ as follows. We will still calculate the total number of units our patients are using a day. So 21 in the morning and 32 units at night. I've taken those numbers from the question. So 21 plus 32 gives me a total of 53 units per day. So that's how many, much insulin my patient needs a day. If the pen comes as 100 units in one milliliter, then I want to know that if I've got a three milliliter pen, question mark, how many units are gonna be in there? Well, on the right, to go from one mil to three mil, we times by three. So on the left, I'm gonna times my 100 units by three. That'll give me an answer of 300 units there are in one of these three mil pens. So now I will take the total number of units my patient needs a day and I'm going to utilize that. So I'm going to do 300 units in one insulin pen divided by 53 units that my patient needs in one day. So that's how much there is in one pen. That's how much my patient needs in one day. So 300 divided by 53 gives me an answer of 5.6603773. So that means my patient can get five full days of insulin out of this pen. Now the extra step that you have to do when you've got twice a day or more and the patient's getting one injection per dose is you can't just say, oh yeah, it's gonna give five full days of insulin. That's, that's spot on. Now I'll say, how many pens does my patient need? Five pens, five times five is 25 full days. That would be wrong because when the dosing structure is twice a day, twice a day, I'm going to say this once more, you must check is there any insulin left in that pen that can provide even one of the doses of that day. So if they're using, look, I'll write it down, they're using 21 units in the morning and they're using 32 units at night, the amount of insulin that's left in that pen might be able to provide one of these doses. So you're going to do five pens that you've calculated that they're using, sorry apologies, I'll rub that out, it's not five pens at the minute. It's five days that one pen is going to last. We're gonna times that by how many units they're using a day. So 21 plus 32 is 53 units per day. So I'm gonna do five days times 53 units times five is 265 units they'll use up. So if they're gonna use up 265 units out of this insulin pen, we can work out how much is left. So there's 300 units in this insulin pen that we've got. Our patient is, I'm gonna color it blue so you can visualize this. Our patient is gonna use up 265 of those units in five full days, in five days. Now, how much is left over this little yellow line there? Well, you're gonna do 300 minus 265. So 300 minus 265 is 35 units. So this yellow amount that's left is equal to 35 units. And this is the interesting part because if there's 35 units left in that insulin pen and our patient can use 21 units in the morning and 32 units at night, can you see that that 35 that's left can provide one of these doses? So what that means is that one of these insulin pens is equal to five full days that we calculated. So five full days plus one dose. It can provide that 35 units that's left one dose. And it's nice and easy now from here, because all you have to do is say, okay, the question wants to know 
how many days will five pens supply? So all we do is we times each of these by five. Because one pen is five days, five pens will be 25 days there. And then for this one dose that it's providing, that one pen, five pens are gonna provide five doses. So there's 25 days, I'm gonna write it out a bit clearer, and five doses in five pens. So we have to say, okay, if our patient can get two doses out per day, two doses equal one day, then five doses that they've got are gonna provide five divided by two, two and a half days, which would be two full days. So we've got 25 days plus our two full days which gives us a total of 27 days. So let's just go over this again. Let's recap this to what I just did here. So let's break this down. Let's start from the very top. I'll just scroll back up. Here we go. So the question asked us, how many days will five pens supply? We isolated that this is a pathway to question. The question is telling us that we cannot split doses across the pens. So what we did, was we said we'll add together, I'll switch on the highlighter and in yellow to make it easier. We added together 20, ooh, what's going on here, sorry about that. We added together 21 day units in the morning and 32 units at bedtime to give us a total of 53 units per day. Just like before, we calculated how many insulin units there are in one pen, 300 units. We then did 300 units, just like before, 300 in our pen, divided by the number of units they need for one day, and we worked out that there's 5.6603773, which means there's five full days in that insulin pen. Here, I said we have to do an extra step. Here, we have to be, understand that because the dosing structure is twice a day, and it's pathway two, what we're going to do is we're gonna get our five full days, and we're gonna times it by the total number of units a day to work out how many units of insulin these five full pens will provide, sorry, five days will provide. So now here, I then said, okay, if there's 300 units in a pen, let's minus our 265 units that they've used in five days, what's left? And this yellow color liquid that's left is 35 units. And here we say, is that 35 units, can it provide a dose? And yes, it can, because if they're using 21 units in the morning and 32 units at night, that 35 units can provide any one of these two doses. So that means that one pen is equal to five days and one dose. Five days and one dose. So then we said, if one pen is equal to five days and one dose, five pens, which is what our question wants to know, would be 25 days, five times five is 25, and five times one dose is five doses. So 25 days and five doses. So we have to convert these five doses into days. And if they're using two doses a day, that would be two full days. So we don't count the half day, we say two full days. Because obviously one injection must provide one full dose. So that means 27 days, 25 days plus our two full days. I hope you've enjoyed the teaching here today. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more great training videos. Please also head over to my teaching platform, www.pharmacymasterclass.online, where you can find hundreds of training calculation questions and videos where I talk through and I teach the methodology and the principles to every section of the GPHC framework. On my teaching platform, students can find a paper one and a paper two training course, Paper one is focused solely on the calculations exam and covers every section of the GPHC framework, teaching you the methodologies and the principles that you need to master calculations. My students consistently score over 30 out of a possible 40 in the GPHC registration exam. In the paper two element of the training course, my students receive written and printed books, which have all the notes in that the students need to revise for paper two, covering clinical, OTC and MEP. So please don't waste time writing out notes. 
it's all pre-done for you. You've got a structured online learning dashboard, which has videos, mock exams, hundreds and hundreds of training questions. It's all fully supported by myself, a pre-registration tutor of 20 years experience, which I check in with my students with regular phone calls and support their learning. I also include mock exams in the training 